What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Daily Misfire. Crazy here, Colin is here to help you understand what the heck to do with your Pro Villa distributor. So we're going to cover, because I have to do it now, so we're, we're going to cover how you change springs, what what the heck everything is inside of this distributor, um, and kind of what timing does, kind of just a quick overview of it, um, and why, you know, your car is lazy when it doesn't have enough ramp in it, or it's, you know, pinging really bad at the top because it has way too much timing, total advance in it. So uh, let's jump right into it. Okay, so we are in the stage of I haven't pulled anything apart yet because the car is currently running. Um, the issue that I have with the car right now is I think it has way too much ramp in it, so I get too much total timing. Um, and I'll show you my math so you can see it. Um, so the issue that I'm having right now, this is all my math that I need to get to. So my starting initial timing right now is about 5 degrees. Um, my total timing that I have right now is around 44, 45 degrees which that number is okay. The issue is that number is way too low and I can't just bring this up because um, that will also bring that number up and we don't want to go higher than that number really because that's a lot of timing. Um, for those of you that don't know what timing is, let me show you, or you don't quite understand what timing is. So you're, uh, we're gonna do this. So your balancer is like this on the front of the engine. So that's your harmonic balancer. We're gonna put a cross in it, so you have you know one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. So each one of these numbers, that's the fire order for a small block or big block Chevy. Um, so obviously one is the number one cylinder, you know, and it rolls around like that one eight four three six five seven two. It runs around the fire order. So each one of these, every time you have a timing mark right here. So, and then that says, you know, one or whatever. That is top dead center on the engine. So, as this mark right here, because that means that the number one cylinder is giving you a top dead center when it reaches this point. So, once it comes all the way around, it's going to hit top dead center right there. And that is either, you know, it's going to be, it can be compression, it might not be. Um, we won't cover that right now because that's not what we're talking about. So, we're going to assume when this get when one gets to top dead center, that means it's, you know, as it comes around, it gets, it hits top dead center right there. So what timing is, it shows you how far the engine is going to, you know, be advanced or how far it's going to be, you know, uh, how far it will be, um, sorry, if it's going to be retarded or if it's going to be advanced. So that means, you know, it's going to fire that one five degrees at idle before it reaches top dead center. That's what that means for advance. So you're advancing the timing, so that means it ignites the fi the fuel, that mixture in the cylinder five degrees before. And at 3000 RPM, it will ignite it 44 degrees before. So instead of it being say, you know, here, it's gonna fire it, you know, here. So that means as the engine comes around, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna pop it right, you know, it's gonna actually fire, you know, around here versus right at top dead center. So that's what timing does. Um, we have, that's what timing is. Yeah, let me log into my computer here. Um, you can see the ramps here with all the different ways, all the different ways you can get, reach timing and which, how you can get to that point. So stock is this one for the billet distributor that I currently have in the car. So you can see the ramp of the timing as it goes up. Um, this is the one that I currently have in the car. It's that top huge one right there where it gives max, you know, it's giving max, uh, the flight 44 degrees of timing at, you know, 2800 RPM, whatever that is. So right now that's what it's doing. And that is what's getting me that 44, 44 degrees of total timing at like 2,500. So really I'm getting like, you know, 30 degrees timing at, you know, 1,500. 
which I don't want. So, because now it's at five degrees and it's lazy on the bottom. So, um, small block Chevys really like timing. Um, typically, you want this number to be anywhere from 10 to 16 degrees. Um, uh, if you give the more timing you give, the harder it is the car to start. Um, less timing, easier. You know, if you're running a hot rod car, you want it to be a little bit more timing. Um, it keeps it, you know, they like it a lot better. Um, there's a lot of other things we're going to go that you can go into that I'm not, not going to because that's not what this is about. This is just for basic understanding. So, um, and I'm sure someone's going to be like, you got, you did this wrong or, you know, vice versa or whatever, you know, when you put a timing light on this, you'll understand what this means. Um, but so that's kind of what we're doing right now. So this, I want to bring up, you know, five to 12, five to seven degrees is what I want to bring this up at least. Um, and I want to keep this around that number. So to do that, as you, there's different springs and there's different setups in the distributor. So what do I mean by springs and stuff? Well, I'll show you. Let me get the distributor out and I'll show you. Okay, so the distributor's out of the car now. So you see how it has, you know, that's regular, you know, just spinning on the cam. It spins, you know, moves that around every time it gets a cylinder, it pops, you know, lights a lightning plug and, you know, puts thunder down the engine and, you know, lets it make horsepower. Um, make vroom vroom noises and be fun. These, this little baggie of goodies is all the springs, screws, and everything you need to rebuild what's under here. So you can kind of hear what moves in there a little bit maybe. Um, so if you hold this, this will still move a little bit. I don't know if I can do it with, you know, two, I'm holding my phone with one of my hands, but maybe if I go like, that maybe, okay. So you can see, see how the distributor itself moves. So that's vacuum advance because I'm twisting that. So vacuum advance is when the engine provides vacuum to that guy right there, it gives it a little bit more timing. So if you want to, you can lock that out. Um, in our case, we're not gonna worry about that because we don't need to lock it out. I just need to lower, lessen the ramp on the distributor itself, um, which is where those little dudes come in. So let's crack this baby open so you can see what's underneath that um, and you'll see what underneath the cap of the shoe looks like. Okay, so now you can kind of see a little bit more what, what it looks like going on underneath. So these are, these are gonna be what we're replacing. It's these two little springs right here. It's pretty simple. Um, really not that big of a deal to do. You just have to be able to pull it out of the engine. And honestly, if you wanted to do it in the car, you probably can. Um, but all these little springs do is they hold those weights in. So see how it, you know, at 3000 RPM, you know, that comes out like that. And that's what gives you full timing. That back, that pulls the timing and gives you advance. So that gives you full timing at, you know, that's what it is at, you know, 3,000 RPM is, you know, 30 something degrees right there. And what's underneath this, um, there's little spacers that go where these mount. And that dictates basically how much um, that will give timing. So I have the smallest ones in there. These are a little bit bigger. Um, I have the ones that are going to give it the most timing possible in there currently. Um, so we're going to look back at my, you know, my sheet over there on my computer and we're going to see which ones we're going to use. I think what I'm going to end up doing is swapping one of these guys with one of these guys because these are going to throw it a little bit less um, and then we may be switching the shims inside. Um, let me go check with my trusty computer and we'll see. Okay, so I pulled someone of an audible on what... <laughs> I was originally planning on doing. So originally I was going to run one blue spring, but I was like, you know what? The arc is fine. We just want total lower. So we're just going to replace the two stop bushings right here with the two blue ones. 
we're going to let it rock. So I'm going to put it back together like this, and we're going to see what the timing ends up coming out looking like. So they're pretty easy to work on. The pro billets are super, super simple. Um, they're very easy. They're expensive, but they're very simple to mess with. And honestly, it's like the best distributor that you can run if you're going to run one for a small block Chevy for a streetcar. Because super easy, super easy to work on. They look good, and they perform really well. I think I've had this one for almost four years now, and it's been great. And the one before it worked really well, too. Um, just, I think at some point, uh, inside of it got rusted, and mm -hmm. there was absolutely no advance. So whatever the car was running, like total timing, that's or initial timing, that's what it had. It had a little bit of vacuum, but that was about it. So, you know, you would have, like, you know, 22 degrees of timing versus, you know, 38 to 42. So... Yeah, good times, but yep, we're going to run with that, and we're going to see what that does. So I'm going to put this back together, drop it back in the car, start the car, and we're going to see what it runs like now. Okie dokie, so the distributor is back in. We're going to pop the engine off, and we're going to see what the timing mark is at. I'm sure timing's way off. Not too bad. degrees now. I'm going to give it a little bit more. We're going to back it off just a hair. Alright, let me see what that looks like. I'm going to set you down for a second and I need both hands. Hope you enjoyed this quick video it hopefully it was a little educational um it was a very quickly sprung together thing as i was doing this um the engine is almost together and is almost ready to go driving hopefully this weekend saturday ish we'll be able to go down to bristol they have a cars and coffee in the morning and then there's a street fights in the afternoon 
So hopefully you can get the car set up, get the ch uh, chassis kind of tuned up, um, go out to Cars and Coffee maybe with Abby's Camaro and then go drive. Maybe this will go out too. Um, but then maybe take this car out to street fights tomorrow, that night and go have some fun and try to get some testing in before the next race weekend. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to like and subscribe. Almost to a thousand subs. Stoked. Thank all of you guys for watching and I'll see you guys later.